This is the very same room where we tried to emulate the pace of the Olympic champion Ilud Kipchoge. How fitting is this? The Olympic champion is the world record! Come on, come on, keep it going! As we saw, each athlete has a completely different running technique. And when you tried something that's too extreme for you, when you push yourself really hard, actually it's your technique that suffers first. And yes, arm swing is one of the things that I am also continuously working on. Why so, you might ask? Well, actually, a few years ago, I injured my shoulder, and after my muscles healed and developed a new pattern of moving, I often catch myself doing this movement when I run. Something like this. As if I'm rowing. <laughs> Maybe I should try to do this with both of my arms and see what happens. <laughs> Aloha, sportsmen! Proper arm swing is important for balance and coordination, and it also helps to increase running efficiency. A good arm action helps you to improve your running economy, while incorrect arm form means you're wasting energy. Have you ever wondered why there are so many different weight categories in boxing? If the single most important aspect in boxing was punch speed, then there would only be one weight classification and the fastest puncher would be the strongest. In reality, it's the punching force that really matters, and force is nothing other than mass times acceleration. That is your kinetic energy. That's why in order to produce a good punch, boxers must transfer their whole weight into the strike, and the force of this mass is generated from the ground going through the hips, shoulder, and arm to the fist. Three. In boxing, you transfer your weight to a fulcrum that is your opponent's body. While when you're running, well, it's just the opposite. In this case, you apply your weight to the ground or a treadmill, and your fulcrum is where you position your foot. This is a manual treadmill. It's non-motorized, and its belt moves as you push your feet against the deck. It takes some getting used to. What we're going to do is run first without using our arms, and then run normally. And the monitor will display our current maximum speed. Let's see what we've got here. Victor's top speed without arms was 19 kilometers per hour and 21 when using arms. Boris ran at 22 kilometers per hour without using his arms, and at 25 when running normally. And my results were accordingly, 21 and 24 kilometers per hour. As you see, our arms and hands do help us while running, but can they be a hindrance? Let's try some opposite to normal arm action. Boris is going to move each arm with his leg on the same side, that is, his right arm in sync with his right leg and vice versa. Three, two, one. Here he goes. <laughs> no, you got to run. That's walking. <laughs> yeah, like this. That's it. Yeah. Don't get too much into it. <laughs> or you'll ruin your technique. Thankfully, no one runs like this in real life. But then, what is the proper arm swing? Some athletes run with their hands closed to their chest and their individual style. But when running on trails, for example, the terrain is often rough or uneven, and you use your arms to maintain balance. And with arms held like this, it's actually hard to keep it, you know? When you run, your arms help you to keep balance, as well as pace and tempo. Your arm action is what makes all the difference between running economically and wasting energy. Think about this. Driving at 100 km per hour with rolled down windows increases a vehicle's fuel consumption by as much as 20%, and your arm swing affects your running efficiency even more dramatically. First and foremost, don't tense up. Your shoulders, upper arms, elbows, and hands must all be relaxed. When your muscles tense up, you end up with the wrong posture and waste energy. And besides, it causes muscular imbalance when your muscles get too tight like this. 
The next thing is arm motion. You must propel your momentum forward and your arms must move accordingly. That is, straight forward. Don't swing your arms across your body towards your pockets, sideways, or whatever. To get a better idea, try to run with dumbbells and you'll immediately feel the difference. First, drive your elbows straight forward and backward and then try moving your arms sideways and you'll feel completely off balance. Next, keep your arms compact. In terms of running, it means that you should keep your elbows tucked close to your sides, to your torso. Pretty easy, right? Don't channel your inner hand glider. Your elbow angle. As a rule of thumb, you should maintain your elbows at a less than 90 degree angle, but the precise angle depends on your individual physique. Some athletes have broad shoulders, others have longer arms, some have shorter legs, and so on. All these characteristics affect the angle and your running posture as well. However, changing your elbow angle on the go may sometimes make it easier to run and keep balance. For instance, when running up and downhill. When running uphill, try to bring your hands as close towards your shoulders as possible, and you'll feel that this way it's a bit easier to propel yourself upward with every stride. And when going downhill, open your elbow's angle a bit you'll see that it really helps you to maintain balance while you're descending. Now your hands. Don't clench your fists tight. Instead, fold your fingers lightly towards the center of your palm. It's a very common mistake. Many runners tend to clench their fists as if they're putting all their effort there. You should gently curl your fingers into a fist as if you're carrying something fragile, like a butterfly. And you need to carry this imaginary butterfly until the end of your run so that when you stop, you can open your palm and let it fly away. When you clench your fist, you also get tense and tight through your arms and shoulders, and again, waste too much energy. To draw one more parallel between boxing and running, boxers never clench their fist until the very last moment of impact and for most of the fight, they keep their fist loose. So to help you better memorize and internalize everything I've just told you today, I have a few practical tips you can use. Practice your arm movement in front of the mirror. It's an excellent way to develop proper arm swing. Start with your hands, make your hands into a fist, but don't clench them. Then bend your elbows at a slightly less than 90 degree angle and start swinging your arms. Maintain that angle and at the same time keep your shoulders relaxed and your elbows tucked close to your body. Don't stick them out. Make sure that they gently brush your sides forward and backward. Keep swinging your arms for a few minutes, focusing on what it feels like. This is how you develop muscle memory and it's important to teach your brain and muscles the right movements. Then add running into the mix. Swing your arms while running on the spot and pay attention to the whole checklist. Hands, elbows, compact arms, relaxed muscles, path of motion. You should also try different angles. More acute, more obtuse. Try to memorize these movements. You may even close your eyes and try to get fully aware of what's happening to your body at this very moment. You must put these moves firmly into your memory so that you can effortlessly repeat them when you go outside for running and there's no mirror. After you memorize these movements, you can go through the drill before your runs. And when running, I'd recommend you listen to your body and Focus on what's happening to your arms and how it feels. As you run, try to vary the elbow angle. See what happens as you slightly decrease or increase it. What happens when you start swinging your arms quickly or slow them down. 
Try to feel how your arm action affects your running because arm swing is in fact the key to developing your individual technique that will help you run more efficiently, economically, and also waste less energy. And on top of that, you can also use a tip from our previous video on running form. How can you, as a beginner runner, see if you're doing something wrong? The simplest way is to film the whole thing and analyze it. Make a video of yourself running or ask a friend to film you this way, you'll be able to see if your arm and leg action and your posture are correct and to fix it if necessary. In one of our next videos, we're going to talk about trail running. See you guys soon!